a general discussion of what the Java Champion program is. Uh, in case that you guys don't know what a Java Champion is, or what a Java Champion can do for you and the community, I'm happy to see that we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, well, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Java champions here in attendance. That's a pretty good number. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So we'll we're gonna chat first a little bit about what the Java Champion program is and how you can get involved with it, but then we'll we'll get into more meaty stuff. So you wanna you want me to kick that off, Andre? Well, let's let's see how good I can do with this. So yeah, the Java Champion program is basically a recognition um, and, um, that's been oh, man, I can't speak today. Uh, yes, no, th there wasn't too much coffee in my in my morning. So basically, it's a recognition on the uh, the work that a person has done for the Java community overall. Now, the work can be uh, blogs and talking at conferences such as this one. Uh, writing books, teaching, so many things just did in order to advance the, uh, the knowledge and uh, overall in, the, in Java. Uh, so that doesn't mean that we know everything that is to know about Java. We are not certainly, uh, personally, I am not an expert in Java. I have no idea of many of the JVM internals, although some people believe that we know everything about Java. Some people do actually, like Kirk and Heinz and this guy here, you know, you know Java, right? Okay. Yes, exactly. So, um, so we, we should actually what we do is we talk to people. We get them excited about different things about Java, what, what is good, what is bad, what can be improved, and give some ideas on how these things can actually happen. So, how am I doing? Yeah, very good. Um, okay, so you mind if I get into how you become a Java champion? Yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> there, there's actually two Java Champion home pages. There's the one which you guys are familiar with, which is probably the Kanai site. And there's the one which you're supposed to be familiar with, which is the new one on the community platform, but nobody knows about it yet. Yeah, definitely. I was confused because the previous page that Steve shows, this is the old page. This is completely outdated. So you should go to the new one, which is should under the OTN. You should banner. go to the new one. It's community.oracle.com. Yes. Um, but. I'm going to go to the old one because it has the criteria for <laughs> how to become a Java champion. Okay, so um, basically there's, there's five different criteria. Um, Java champions are leaders, so folks who are doing projects, jug communities, um, et cetera. Java champions are technical luminaries, so they're, they should be somebody who actually has a lot of um, software experience, um, senior, can do, you know, well, well if, you, if you're here, you already qualify for that. Um, independent, minded, and credible. Um, so I fail this because I joined Oracle. So we all, we all make mistakes at some point. But you guys probably qualify. So just being, um, you know, neutral and um, independent in your thinking. Um, Java champions have some really cool application for um, Java technology or humanitarian or educational effort. So if you're involved in um, anyone helping out with Java One for Kids, I mean uh, JCrete for Kids this weekend. Oh, oh. All right. So John, may maybe maybe you should be nominated as a Java champion. You you meet the fourth criteria. <laughs> um, no pressure. And the last one is evangelizing and influencing other developers through your professional activities, consulting, teaching, writing, speaking, et cetera. Um, so as unconference attendees here, you, you actually are doing this as well. There's, you're influencing your peers and you're also influencing all the folks on the, um, on the live stream who are watching. So as you can see, the criteria are not actually that hard to meet. And the process for getting nominated is also not hard. All you need to do is have preferably an existing Java champion nominate you. Um, and they just, they, they send, there's a new form Cassandra put so all the Java champions know about this where they can submit an application, write down the criteria, 
and then she queues up the requests for a review committee. So, very easy, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, Marcus just told me a few minutes ago about that, that new form. And uh, in, in terms of numbers, uh, we used to be 190, but we, got, we just got a new brand uh, Java champion, Roberto Cortez from Portugal, so we are 191 now. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to mention is some of the, the new things we've done in the past year with the Java Champions program. Um, okay, so one thing is we've made our benefits more transparent. <laughs> so um, Oracle, the Java Champions is an independent group, but Oracle sponsors it and um, offers some benefits. And one of them is um, travel benefits for events where you're speaking or, um, you know, talking about Java technologies. Um, so previously, people were sponsored, but it wasn't that open how to, you requested travel and who got travel and all of that stuff. So Cassandra Clark, who's taken over the program, has, has done the very hard job of telling everyone exactly how it works and how you apply for funding and what activities you need to be doing to be qualified. Um, oh, welcome, Kirk. We, we've increased our Java champion count by one. Um, yes, and and the, the the rest of them are somewhere else in a different room, ignoring us. <laughs> um, so, it's good that you you have the benefit of getting some travel funding. Um, the the disadvantage is now that everybody knows exactly how you get it. There's more competition, and therefore Cassandra has a much harder job picking who gets the. Um, travel funding. So for existing Java champions, if you requested for Java 1 and you didn't get it, I will apologize on behalf of Cassandra. She feels really, 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 really horrible <laughs> to say no to folks. But at the same time, I, I think we are actually funding about three times more people than in the past to come to Java 1. So we actually have increased our investment in in funding folks. Yeah, but the interesting thing about this budget that Java champions have access to is that it's now more possible for people that are running local events. If they want to invite a Java champion to come in and give a talk, a workshop, or just is, is spend time with the people, uh, just get in touch with uh, one of us, and then, then we can figure something out. Okay, and then one of the other changes we made in the past year was we, um, we introduced some um, we used to just have one meeting a year at Java One, where we would meet for the leaders' breakfast, but we introduced bi-monthly calls where we have um, somebody from Oracle speak on a technical topic and then some time to, to discuss. Um, so the, the, the last one was we had, um, oh, I'm forgetting his name. Um, 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 so PJ? No, J J we, we, the embedded guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I'm Gary Chan know his name because he works with it. He's the, the, from the Oracle Jet. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm apologizing again. But um, we, each month we, we try to get somebody who's the expert on a topic. Um, I think the next one we have lined up is Dalibor is going to chat about OpenJDK. Um, and then they give some more information that we'd normally talk about outside and then a chance to ask them questions about things. And then we have a chance to discuss topics. Um, the first few meetings were quite good in attendance, but I would recommend more Java champions to attend and participate in these bi-monthly calls. Um, I think it's a good chance for you guys to get together and uh, another good benefit of the program. Um, and the, the last thing which we changed, and this change will happen at Java 1 this year, is rather than having that one hour leaders breakfast, we changed it to a full day summit. So the Friday before Java 1, we're getting all the Java champions together. Um, we have a bunch of um, technical content and presentations around Java and other initiatives. And it's, it's a great chance to actually get your opinions and ideas heard in front of the Oracle leadership. So if things go well, um, and no promises because we're, we're lining up folks, we'll have, we'll have folks from, you know, George Saab and um, Mark Reinhold, all the way up to 
Thomas Curian, who runs engineering at Oracle, um, in front of the Java champion. So it should be a it should be a good lineup. All right. So oh, and of course a a, a nice barbecue in the evening afterwards. Um, put on by Bruno Souza and the Brazilian crew. Um, and I think we're, we're going to, traditionally it's been at my house, but we're going to move it to um, a nice cottage um, that the Parks and Recreation Department in Belmont has. So not very far away, but potentially a bigger, nicer venue. Well, one of the hassles of having too many Java champions at the time, right? <laughs> they, they, none of them fit in your backyard. Yeah, yeah, it was getting a little cramped last year, I think. Okay, so now that, that you guys have a, a rough idea of what the Java Champion program is and how you can get nominated and the stuff that is coming up, do any of you have any questions that you would like to ask? Can you repeat it for the stream, please? Yeah. Are there any um, upcoming or thought of uh, educational efforts for people to either get up to speed with new Java features or um, new people, young people, to get into Java development? Because I, I see many of the uh, uh, kids' events are more around like things like Scratch and, and uh, Python and not so much Java itself. I, I think the Minecraft modding is, uh, is an exception, but are there any plans in this direction that uh, anything educational is coming? Um, okay, so I, c I can answer things I know we're doing at Oracle. This isn't specific to the Java Champions program. Um, but if you've noticed, all, all my kids' workshops are Java-related. <laughs> um, Arun does a good in Minecraft. Um, modding scenario as well. Um, and also, I've been working with Oracle Foundation, so they're, they're kind of the, um, the giving arm of the company. So they, they give donations and they work with um, schools and you know, charitable organizations. Um, and they actually were having the same problem where a lot of their kid material was not actually Java, it was other technologies they were introducing the kids. So I'm working with them to get more Java technologies, and in general, more Oracle technologies in their um, in the stack of things which they're they're educating young kids on. Um, but you know, I think as as Java champions or as future Java champions, um, you know, you can definitely help out with that. So usually, with like organizations like DevOps for Kids, it's it's volunteer driven. Whatever people volunteer and you know want to talk about is is how the content gets formed. Um, so as an example, like we're doing a, a Lego workshop here at jcrete for kids It would be very easy to use the Lego visual software, which is <coughs> horrible, or to, to use something else that might seem at first to be easier to the kids, but actually it's, it's harder to teach them real programming concepts. And at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't really advance their skills much. Right, they're just um, learning a little bit of logic, but not really learning how to program. So we're going to be using Lejos, which is um, a Java distribution that runs on the Lego Mindstorms, um, created by one of the universities. And I think that's a much better example for the kids. It actually teaches them programming. It, it uh, gives them skills, which they can use later, rather than just using a, a visual builder um, for the exercise. Yeah, in that regard, I would say that I'm definitely biased if <clears throat> when I believe that uh, Groovy will be a much better approach to learn the basics of Java before getting all around the, the, the different nuances of the Java syntax. And in case of Lego Mindstorms, there's a version of Groovy that runs on, on Lego. Uh, but um, the, uh, the syntax is very Java-ish. So you right now, as a kid, you don't gain much. As a developer, you might. So in this case, I will say, we, so as a community, we have to make sure that this thing gets up to a, play, a point where a kid will be able to pick it up easy. I, remind, I, I recall that uh, it was a few Java ones ago, somebody presented, I think it was the uh, script bow, uh, in terms of the Scala, there's this software called Kojo. 
uh, supposed to teach kids how to program in Scala. And uh, I completely lost track of that. I don't know if how good that thing is doing or not. Uh, but this is, these are the kind of stuff that we can do to uh, bring kids into the JVM space. Any more other questions? So there, there on the scratch board, there is a topic, I don't know who proposed it or what exactly is meant by that, but it's called uh, MVPs in Java. Um, since we're, we have time, can you talk about that or is that somehow related to Java champions or, or is that? MVP, uh, is this um, most valuable player, player yeah. or model view most valuable player yeah. or model view presenter? I'm sorry? Model view presenter. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so that so that thing is informal. All right. Uh, yeah, because I think that the MVP was t uh, put together with the tester programming. Was was it you, Tony, that proposed the MVP in in, in Java? No, somebody else. You see, this is a problem with TLAs. <laughs> Too many um, of them. So I think last year uh, there was a long discussion, pretty much in the same session. Um, about uh, how times change when Oracle took over and that the Java champions didn't have as much influence as they had in some times. It sounds like you're trying to fix that, right? I mean, would you explain being more transparent? It sounds like you're, it, it currently is trying to be changed. Yeah, so I think, I think we're, we're trying to move in that direction and make improvements, um, although there's still room for improvement. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so part part of the part of the challenge is so I I didn't work for Sun, I don't have the reference of, of how things worked internally at Sun, but at least working for Oracle, um, some of what you see of lack of transparency is is not actually an external problem. So to the extent which we can make things more transparent and encourage folks inside to talk to you guys, that might help the transparency for us too. Basically just keep the conversation going. So I remember last year there were some mentions that um, uh, uh, Java Champions site are going to be more interactive and provide some more things than just displaying uh, information about Java Champions program. Some, uh, some way we could collaborate, uh, contribute to some things, maybe promote things that we are doing, showing all in one place. Is there any ideas to make that happen? Yeah, so the, the new website, which um, we have for the Java Champions program. Um, more so than the old website, it actually lets you make modifications, changes, and improvements. Um, so if you have ideas for things which you can add to the website, it's very easy to do now. Um, and we also have an internal Java Champion website. Um, so this is the one we used to take questions for the leaders breakfast last year. And that's a space where we can have conversations or topics or things which are specific to the Java champions. Um, although, really, this is kind of up to the Java champions, like you guys, to push what you want and to help populate content and make things happen. Um, you know, Cassandra and I can enable stuff, but we're probably not the people who are actually going to be creating the conversations and creating the content and topics that are relevant to the program. There's also another interesting thing. Um, there is an interactive map created by Stefan Jensen, another Java champion. Uh, it's, a, it's already hooked into the um, new Java champion website, isn't it, Steve? So in this map, you can have the, the look at the locations of Java conferences, Java events, uh, Java user groups, and Java champions. So uh, yeah, that one precisely. So uh, with this, you can pinpoint where a Java champion is usually located. Yeah, that, that's, there are a lot in Europe in this case. 
Well, you guys have to figure out something how, how to fix that. Yeah. What's going on with Russia? <laughs> right? You need a job champion. Oh, we s ship of just. <laughs> you have to bring him back. Okay, well, with this thing, you, you can have a look at where things are happening around the world. And if something happens close to you or to cl your community, it would be great if we keep spreading the word uh, about this, this information. I think, uh, yeah, so if I can add, I, well, I guess one of the most valuable inputs that could come up from the champions group is the ability to influence um, Java organization, Lumen Oracle, who is certainly you know, leading the 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 Java, you know, as language as, pro as a product. For example, there are, well, there are a number of technical difficulties that external committers face when they deal with the OpenJDK base, and internal guys know about it, but somehow it doesn't. It never becomes a priority. Uh, for example, ability to you know push change sets into JPRT from outside, uh, you know, of 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 Oracle. So I guess back to Java champions, what they could do is, is the if, if, if there could be a possibility to sort of to vote uh, who to invite on those meetings, you know, webinars or, or meetings, that would be, uh, you know, in this particular case, ma uh, Oracle management and perhaps division, you know, you know let's say VM, VM architects and, and, and think to get through it together how, how to lift those barriers which somehow somehow do not help you to contribute back into OpenJDK. Yeah, and that, that's, that's a good point. Um, up to now, just to get things kicked off, um, I reached out internally and got folks from Oracle who had topics which they could um, contribute to technically. But that runway ends um, with Dalibor's discussion of OpenJDK. And after that, we're going to be asking the Java champions for what topics you'd like to hear and then pulling in folks from Oracle to talk at the bi-monthly meetings. Um, so we'll get some of that at the Leader Summit right before Java 1. Um, and then hopefully out of that, we can line up some folks for the ensuing bi-monthly meetings. So the map that you just show us, uh, is very interesting, and it should be there. Should be uh, all, all Java events, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, are they? Is it updated? How many events are there at the moment? Um, that's a good question. The internet's not working, which is why I took it down. Yeah, yeah. But um, so, Stefan Stefan Janssen, who runs DevOx, he's the maintainer of the map, um, and he made a call out to the jug leaders. Um, and maybe I think the Java champions as well to populate events and things. So it's basically, it's a community map. Um, you submit the events you know about or the things which you know about and then they get added to the map. It's, there's no, there's nobody in the back kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, any, anyone, anyone can submit something for that map, more information. Yeah. I. Yes, yes, that's exactly my point. Many events happening and people just don't know about it. Maybe we should all start promoting that map and inviting the, uh, everybody who makes conference. It's in their interest to let people know about it. So maybe that could be yeah. one specific yeah, thing absolutely. we could do. Okay. Uh, on a kind, of, kind of on a similar note, I think I spoke with you, Chris. Like, uh, but, but yeah, you, you. And I ask you, like, how do you find conference uh, you know where to apply to. You know, you know how do you find call for paper pages uh, <laughs> for for like those and 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 and, and from the other ones. So um, sometimes there is not enough vision about all the regional conferences. Like, well, I it, for for me, for example, it's hard to travel far distances. But if the a conference nearby, you know, sort of local. In my case, it's the Baltics, Eastern Europe. You know, I, I I I find out about those t too late. So um, when the when the call for paper is over, um, and also I don't know which ones are good, uh, which ones I should you know, try for best, but you know more than the other ones. So uh, information about conferences, where to speak, it's 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 pretty good. Would be would be helpful. That it's that is a good session to talk, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I would I would turn it into a bigger session in, 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 in yeah, Hacker Garden. 
So, so I guess the request is to add more info on conferences to the to the Chump page or program. Yeah, no, I th I think that's good, and it it's actually the the map is getting quite complete um, with events and conferences. So, if there's something you don't see on there, it's easy to add it. Um, and wh where where do you normally look for conferences when you're when you're searching, social media or? Um, it, it depends. So um, there is, I think it's callforspeakers.com, which has a lot of conferences. There is Twitter. There sometimes people just ask, um, and there. Lanyard. Lanyard, yeah. Um, a couple of different websites. I think I have a list somewhere because somebody all asked me like a couple of weeks ago how do so I do your, that. So it's your your little vacation planning bookmark list. <laughs> I, I usually I usually get <laughs> tweets like, "Oh, I was accepted at the school conference." Well, accepted means that the call for paper is over, and they've done their first review, and you know, got accepted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you gonna open up your inbox for us, Kirk? A, a very, very interesting way of finding about of finding out about new, about new conferences is having a Twitter um, a Twitter filter uh, on other people. Like I submitted to. <laughs> very nice. Nice hacks from champions. Well, by the way, there is a Java Champions Twitter, Twitter account that you can follow. Oh. And, and this one follows every other Java Champion. <laughs> oh, that's how you, how you collect followers. Now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we collect maybe. We don't pay for them. So would be would it be possible to crawl uh, Twitter and follow Twitter accounts and these uh, sites that have called for papers and automatically put conferences uh, that has uh, history at least two years on our event calendar? So yeah, I think I think you might need like a neural network to parse all the content and figure out, yeah, do some learning over time for for which ones are actually positive versus negative hits. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think another, I'm not sure if that is exist or hey, that exists. Hey, we got another Java champion joining the group. So now we're 12. Uh, well, um, not sure if that exists. If that exists, but um, maybe it would be interesting to see, you said uh, educational projects, whatever. Um, is there a list of what people worked on? I mean, especially, I, I obviously know for the active ones, um, but if you look at the Java champions, especially some of the older people that kind of got acquired or something, it probably would be interesting why they were selected in the first place. Um, okay, I missed it. You were asking about kids stuff? No, no. And then? The Java well, in general. I mean, people were selected for reasons. So, so in, more in general, people were selected for reasons, as you showed us there. Oh, those okay, five so points, it's like, right? like showing the, the reasons, like the selection process. Okay, so historically, that would be impossible to do unless you trawled through a bajillion emails. Um, what we do have on the website is we have the bios of folks. Okay. Those usually give you a big idea, a good idea why they were selected and what sort of activities they're doing. Um, but many of them post links to uh, their uh, GitHub account if they have it, uh, LinkedIn, Lanyard. Or, or some other places where you can find more information about that particular person. Yeah, and I think um, one of the other attributes of the Java Champion program is when you're a Java Champion, you're a Java Champion for life. So um, in some cases, what people are currently doing are different than the reasons why they got into the program initially. Um, but it's fine as long as they're still, they're still um, contributing in some way. I find that uh, important because their contributions were was uh, good or impressive, and that won't change. So I think that's good that they re keep the Java Champion um, badge. <laughs> Steve, you're still a Java Champion, Steve. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm an alumnus. 
You're still a Java but champion. But still, <laughs> well, it's Java champion alumnus. So yeah, yeah, exactly. See, it has something else, not something less. <laughs> what about Oracle thinks about this, actually? That's what the, what, about, what about, about Oracle? Oracle itself, you know, the management, the people, the, the directors at Oracle, and uh, the previously there was the Java evangelists and stuff, and there was a big uh, discussion in the internet about them, and now uh, some people think that they're not needed or whatever. Sorry for the, the, uh, the question might be banal or something, but uh, I lost the, uh, yeah, the, the so news. I, I, can, I can explain why Oracle folks in general are not allowed to be part of the program. Um, and there's, there's debate about how your contributions while you're working at Oracle should reflect on your status for Java Champion. I think that's what most of the discussion on the mailing list was about. But the, the, the difference between most Java champions who get inducted into the program and folks who work for Oracle or in the past Sun is that um, Java champions don't get paid for their work directly, right? So they, they have to be passionate about it. They have to do it on their own volition. If you're, if you're working for the company which sponsors the technology, um, like I was an evangelist for several years, they would pay my salary and they'd pay my travel, right? Um, and that potentially means that I'm just doing it as part of a job. I mean, I wasn't, but some people might just do it because they're being asked to do it. And then when they leave, they would do something else, right? They could leave, you know, leave Oracle slash Sun and then join a company which um, evangelizes .NET technology and then be going to the same events and talking about .NET instead. Um, so I think the, re the reason that you have that barrier in places to prevent people who are getting paid to work on things from being confused with external evangelists who are doing it out of passion. And then the issue is once they leave and you look at their contributions, yes, they would qualify, but are they gonna continue doing it or do they have other interests? Too many Java champions to <laughs> to give a different point of view. Well, I mean, since we since we have a bunch of Java champions here, and since we have an open mic, does does anyone have any pet peeves about the program? <laughs> Is there something that can be improved? On the yeah, Java that, that was a nice program? way of putting it. Thanks, Andre. <laughs> There's one. Um, okay, so um, so the, obviously the program was set up with Sun as part of community outreach, and obviously um, Oracle has different ideas of community. Oh, is it really that directional? Yeah. Okay. Shall I start again? Said. So, Okay, so it's, this is part of community outreach, right? Started by Sun, and or since Oracle has uh, different ideas of community, I'm wondering if we could do a better job of integrating with uh, somehow with Oracle's idea of community so that we become, um, should I say, uh, I'm not sure which word to use here, but I'll just use this word more, I'll use the wrong word, uh, more relevant to um, <coughs> Oracle, in terms of how they can use this to help mitigate some of the problems that Oracle typically runs into when dealing with this community? Um, okay, so I think, I think the best answer for that is to describe our peer advocacy program and how they integrate. And I think that gives you a better idea of kind of company culture-wise, what the expectation is internally. Um, so we have another evangelism, like external evangelist ex program called the Oracle Aces. Um, it's kind of like the Java Champions. It's actually both, it's under the same organization. So the group I'm in, OTN, runs both programs. But the groups are necessarily treated differently. And um, 
some of the some of the like the ways in which the program are run are very different. Oh, we're up to thirteen Java champions. Very good. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on the Oracle ACE program, but I'll just highlight the big differences. One big difference is we pick the Oracle ACEs, kind of. This, we, I think we get nominations, but then we go and select them, and it's not for life, it's like a, it's like a benefit. And then the other thing is that as you move up in tiers, so it's a tiered program, like you get guaranteed benefits the more, the higher you move up in the tier, but there's more expectations, like that you would write articles, that you would speak at conferences, and as almost an external mouthpiece of the company, most of the Oracle ACEs talk specifically about our technologies. Yeah, okay. Um, but then, since, since they tend to be pretty closely aligned with our products, the opposite's also true, that when they get upset and they hate our products or they have an issue that they'd like to raise internally, they're not afraid to um, directly engage with our leaders and make the complaints known. And I think there's a, for some reason, there's a perception when things are coming from the Oracle ACE program that that represents customer feedback, um, more so than when it comes from Java champions currently. So did I, did I partially answer your question, Kirk? I, in a roundabout way? <laughs> okay, you, you look like you're ready. Well, I, I don't think integrates the right, the right word because the Java Champion program is for the Java community. It's not for like a product community. But so w one of the things we were talking about in the um, <coughs> related to the Java Champion program was working on some focus groups where we'd have subgroups of the Java Champions focused on different technologies. And that solves one of the differences between the two advocacy groups because with the Java champions as a whole, it's very hard to, to get um, folks, for example, the subset of Java champions who are extremely passionate about client. Um, so there, there is a group of those, like one of them sitting there typing right now, who cares quite a bit about client technology. Um, but their voice sometimes gets drowned out by the larger set of Java champions who might have other concerns or other interests and aren't focused on that particular technology area. And so as a message back to Oracle, coming from the larger Java champions, you, you hear the noise. You don't actually hear the, the customer feedback from folks who work in that field. So um, you said the, the whatever the other guys are called, uh, they're aligned yeah, to the product. So Java, is, so paid products are seen differently from unpaid products like Java in Oracle? Uh, that, that would not be an unfair characterization. <laughs> but I mean, J Java is, is not un just unpaid products, right? So there's, um, our application server, there's the cloud products that sit on top of Java, um, and a lot of internal Oracle products use Java underneath the cover. So it's, it's a foundational technology that a lot of our stuff's built on. Do we have any overlap between ACE uh, directors and Java champions? Okay, so we have, and we currently do, but it's kind of random, so Adam Bean, is both a, an Oracle ace and a Java champion. Marcus Eisel is also an Oracle ace and a Java champion. He's, no he's, he's not an ace director, but I think he's still an ace. Yeah, I thought that when he changed jobs uh, two jobs ago, he had to relinquish the title. So uh, you're talking about this uh, turn it on your mic. Marcus Eisel, I believe he had to relinquish the title when he switched to another company because some conflict, potential conflict of interests. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but maybe. There, there, they, to answer the question, there is overlap. There's at least one. And 
it's it's not discouraged. So I mean, if if you if you thought you fit in both categories, both a a Java advocate and also you were really focused on Oracle technologies, then you could potentially be both. At this conference, I I find myself using a lot the word passionate because here you have a lot of passionate people about the technology, and it that's what makes JCrit amazing. Um, so it's not a uh, wonder that we also have a lot of Java champions meeting here for exactly the same reason. So that's what I like also about the Java champions, that they are passionate and they have a very independent opinions and not like um, just the feedback from the paying, well, no, the from customers about pay, paid services. Um, but from the discussion last year, one, one of the discussion or one of the topics in that discussion was that um, it's great that the Java champions have uh, many benefits from Oracle, like the paying uh, trouble and things like that. Um, but I also heard about that there was not um, way back. I mean, the Java champions didn't have a lot of influence on, 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 on Java. And I know that the answer is you have the JCP, you have other ways to influence Java, but is that going to change? Yeah, okay, so um, potentially stuff we're doing like the Java Champions Summit will, will help with that. Um, so just culturally, Oracle, I mean, probably you guys either have heard this from other people or already know this, it, it tends to be a little hierarchical. Is that, was that an understatement, Marcus? Okay, um, so often, unless you get feedback to the right level, it doesn't actually influence direction. Um, so one of the things we're trying to do is kind of up-level the conversations for the Java champions to be chatting with the right folks who, who are in decision-making positions where they would be able to influence the direction of Java. Um, so hopefully we're going to accomplish that with the JC Summit and then have a continuing conversation with some of the more senior leadership at Oracle. Um, and I think the other, the other thing which is working in our favor is there's a big internal push to be more developer engaged and focused within Oracle. So that means that the upper leadership is more receptive to, to hearing from folks like the Java champions. Um, who speak to developer audiences. Make sure it's on. You might need to press the button. I think there was, there was a, a, a period, a couple, maybe a year or so ago, where uh, internal Oracle people were saying on the, on the uh, Java Champions mailing list, um, yes, but you guys who are Java champions are not real developers. And, and that caused a lot of uh, understandable uh, consternation as a result. So, but I, I, can, I can see where, that, where that's coming from, but maybe you could talk on that point, uh, this, this concept of, of an Oracle developer versus uh, what, what Java champions are doing in their daily practice. Okay, so I can't because <laughs> I don't remember the discussion and I wouldn't agree with it either. <laughs> I, think, I think quite often um, things that Java champions are saying um, don't, l don't really connect to, to Oracle because those on those levels that, that do um, read those um, kinds of uh, messages kind of think, yeah, well, you know, these, these are not people working in large Oracle uh, organizations, Oracle partners, Oracle customers. They're not, they're not, um, you know, using, they're not creating really large, massive applications. They're external consultants coming in, and that's all well and good, but that's one sector of, of, of the development world, and, and there's actual serious business going on that we need to cater to more so than to uh, a series of people who are not, um, from those large organizations. Yeah, okay, so I think that speaks a little to the difference between the Oracle ACE and the Java Champion program. Most of the Oracle ACEs tend to be 
consultants or developers at large installed base Oracle customers. Um, but at the same time, I think currently, like I said, there's a big focus on like reaching out to a developer audience. So I, I don't think you'd get the same reaction from Oracle leadership, at least not what you were describing. And I guess this will be the opportunity for those folks that are not Java champions among us here in this discussion and those that are looking at from the stream is that if you need some kind of, uh, well, if you can give us some input, you can give us some feedback so we can somehow function as a funnel of all that information to Oracle. So everybody has a voice, everybody has something to say, some kind of opinion. And uh, there's, there's always the, the notion, like as I said earlier, we just have to continue with the, the flowing with the discussion, flowing of the communication. I think we need a couple action items for you guys as attendees. So who, who in here is a Java champion? Okay, so all, all 12 of you guys, you have some homework. You have to nominate one JCrete peer this conference. <laughs> all right, now, see that, that, that seems like a hard job, but who, who here is not a Java champion? Okay, so there's at least as many, there's more not Java champions here than there were Java champions. And if you were sitting in this session, you're obviously interested in the program, so you would be a good candidate to be nominated. So I think, I think we have a good mix here. We have people who can do nominations and we have people who can be nominated. So that's your homework. Be nominated or nominate somebody. In terms of giveaways after a session, that was a great giveaway. <laughs> That's your opportunity, Ivan, to get a Java, uh, Russian Java champion nominated. <laughs> there it is. All right, so thanks everyone for attending.